Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It's good to see you all here on this Christ the King Sunday. This is the last Sunday of our church year, calendar year, a little different than our normal year. And so we recognize Jesus as the King of all. And um, this is also, though, the second part of a stewardship series. So I'm going to be focusing more on the stewardship theme this, this morning instead of Christ the King. But I want to welcome anybody that might be visiting with us today. Uh, we want to acknowledge all the people joining us on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, both are streaming live right now, so we have other people joining us uh, that way. So there's always more people than what it may look like here in the church um, this morning. So a uh, couple of announcements I want to highlight for you. Um, poinsettias, you need to get those orders in today. It's the last day to get uh, poinsettias ordered. Um, Annual committee reports are due by the 15th. Um, this week being Thanksgiving week, we will not be having Bible study uh, this Wednesday or confirmation class this week. We'll take a break for confirmation. Uh, Christmas decorating on December 5th. We'll be decorating after the worship service. So if you want to stick around, we could use all the help we can get on the 5th um, to decorate the church. And we also have Advent devotionals available. If you want to pick one up um, out on that table um, by the stained glass window, you can uh, have a free Advent devotional to use during the Advent season, which is next Sunday we start Advent. And I think other than uh, Iowa winning in football and Wisconsin winning in football yesterday, uh, <laughs> that's all I have for announcements. Unless anybody else have any other announcements that we need to know about, yes going on this week or anything we need to know. All right, well, if not, then we're going to have a dedication of our new keyboard. You got to hear Noli playing some of that strings back in the prelude. Beautiful new. We have a brand new uh, Roland Digital keyboard that we um, received as a gift of memory, memorial money, in memory of Mary Lou Kading, given by her family, Maxine O'Brien and, and the family, Christina and Steve and Ashley. So we thank them for giving this wonderful gift of music and I would like to have a dedication time for this so I'm going to go over by the piano and um, probably hard for you to see it but it's just a it's, it looks like a regular piano but it's a digital keyboard so it means it can do all different kinds of sounds like strings and brass and flute and clarinet and whatever <laughs> instrument you want to have we can do on this keyboard so I know Noli is quite happy with it and uh, this will add a whole lot of extra background music for our singing and, and prelude and postlude here to help worship God. So, let's have a dedication time. Sing with joy to God our strength and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. Praise God with tambourine and dance. Praise God with strings and pipe. Let us pray. We give you thanks, God, for your abundant gifts. The whole earth reflects your glory. All creatures praise you. You alone do great wonders, and by your wisdom you made the heavens and the earth. You have breathed your breath of mercy to your children to hear from them joyful shout with their own song. In the fullness of time, God, you sang your new song, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is exalted by poets, musicians, and all your saints. Your spirit is the breath of our music and song. So we ask, Lord, to send your blessings upon us and upon this digital keyboard, which we dedicate to your praise and glory. Enrich the lives of your people through it and grant us faith to hear your gracious purpose in it. By your Holy Spirit, let this keyboard enliven the proclamation of your word to the building up of your church, to the glory of your name, and to the good of all your people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, so we want to get thank, thanks to Maxine and the family for this gift of memory for Mary Lou. A good way to remember her. We'll continue now with our confession of forgiveness. I ask you to please stand if you are able.
We gather to worship today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and one another, and we'll take a moment of silence to name in prayer uh, those sins that we are aware of. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love, to welcome those you send, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways and free us to serve those in need. Amen. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sins for Jesus' sake and remembers them no more. Lift up your hearts and your heads, for yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. We sing our gathering hymn, Come Thou Almighty King. Come thou almighty King, help us thy name to sing, help us to praise, Father of glorious hope. I invite you to join with me on praying the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O oh God, you show forth your almighty power chiefly by reaching out to us in mercy. Grant us the fullness of your grace, strengthen our trust in your promises, and bring all the world to share in the treasures that come through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Maybe see, like to have the children come up to the steps for a children's message right now. Put my mask on here. All right, we got a few kids here this morning. All right. Good morning. <laughs> I'm going to practice this again so we can practice saying it. Say it really loud. Good morning. Good morning. That's better. Thank you. Good to see you guys. How are you all doing? Good? All right. I have, what do I have here? You know what this is, don't you? What is this? Apples. There are apples in there. You want to help me count them? Let's count how many we got. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
Does any of them look better or bigger than another? This looks like the biggest. Does this look like a big apple here? That looks like a good one, doesn't it? That's, I think, the best apple of them all. Don't you think? A big apple? Do you guys like apples? I do, too. These are really good apples. I forget the brand, but they're really good. So I want to tell a story about apples today. And the story is called Once Upon an Apple. Or Once Upon a Time. Okay? Once upon a time, there was a man who had nothing. And God gave him ten apples. God gave him the first apple. Let's say, let's say God gave him this apple. The first apple so that he would have something to give to God to show his thankfulness to God for the other nine. So he gave him the one to give as thankfulness to God. Okay, so he kept that one. Then God gave him three apples to eat. So he got three more apples to eat. Okay? And then God gave him three more apples to trade for shelter from the sun and rain. So he gave him three more apples that he could turn in to get something to sleep in, like a bed in the house. God gave him three other apples. Gave him three more apples. One, two, three. To trade for clothing. Then he looked at the first apple he received. He knew that God had given him the first apple so that he could return it to God out of... Yeah, he gave him the first apple so he could give this apple back to God out of thankfulness for the other nine. But this apple looked bigger and juicier than all the rest. And so he thought in his head, he thought that God... God had all the other apples in the world. So does he really need one more apple? So he ate the first apple. And he gave God the core. Hmm. You think that was right? Just to give God the core? No, he should have given God the whole apple, didn't he? Yeah, but he didn't do that. God has given all of us enough to give us what we need, right? You have food to eat, you have a bed to sleep in, a house, enough to show our thankfulness for God and for God's love in Jesus and God's Spirit. God's Spirit's working in our lives. So we want to show thanks to God. And so what are we going to give back to God? God gives us everything we have. Will we return to God our best or will we just give God the core, the leftovers? Right? We want to give God our best. So when you give like an offering, or um, I have some more piggy banks that some of you weren't here last Sunday, but I have some piggy banks down in the science school room that you can put money in to help people who are hungry. And so you can give that, and that's kind of like giving it to God because you're helping people who are hungry, and that's also the way that we give to God too, when we help people who are poor or hungry. So you can give in your offering in the piggy banks back to God, what God's already given you, all right? So let me uh, put these back in the bowl, and we'll say a prayer, and then we'll have you go to science school. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, God, thank you for giving me everything everything that I need. need. Help me to give some of it it back to you by helping others. Amen. All right. Thank you for coming up here, and you can now go to your Sunday school time. Then we'll continue with our scripture readings. The scripture... Scripture reading is from the first King chapter 17, verse 8 through 16. The word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Go now to Zarephim, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephim. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel, so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, 
As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterwards, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. The word of the Lord. Will you please stand if you're able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel for today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, beginning with verse 38. Glory to you, O Lord. After engaging in a series of public arguments with religious leaders in the temple, Jesus contrasts the proud and oppressive ways of those leaders with the sacrificial humility and poverty of the widow. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogue and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. Jesus then sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then Jesus called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We're continuing our two-part series, stewardship series, on uh, a grateful response is our theme for these two weeks. A grateful response. Some of you were here last Sunday, some of you weren't, but last Sunday I focused more on the motivation for giving. Why do we give? And I shared reasons not to give, not, there, for not good motivations to give, like out of guilt or fear, or to pay the bills or to meet a budget, or because that's just what I gave last year and the year before and the year before. Those are not good reasons, motivations to give. Then I looked at the Bible. What does the Bible say is motivations to give? And the Bible lifts up love. We give out of love to Jesus. How do we show our love? By what we give. We give out of thankfulness. God has given us everything. How do I show my thankfulness? By what I give. And we give because we want to make a difference. We want to be a part of what God's doing through this church. And we do that through our offering. So today, I want to talk about how much do we give? Last Sunday, the gospel was about uh, Jesus showing this coin to the Pharisees and saying, you know, give to Caesar the things that are Caesar and to give to God the things that are God's. But did you notice he didn't say how much that is supposed to be? <laughs> Just give to God the things that are God's. 
okay, how much, Jesus? Well, of course, the answer to how much is God's is really everything is God's. Okay, so does that mean I give everything back to God? All my money, all my possessions? Most likely not for us today, but there are examples of people doing that in the Bible. There's a story about a little boy who was given two quarters. One for Sunday school and one for an ice cream cone after Sunday school. Walking along the street, one of the coins slipped out of his hands and fell through the grill work into the drain below where he couldn't get it. The little boy raised his face toward heaven and said with genuine sorrow, Well, God, I guess there goes your quarter. Well, really, both quarters are God's, right? All that we own, all that we possess, all of our money, all of our time, our talents, everything is God's. It comes from God. So the question for us then is how are we managing that? How are we taking care of it? What do we do with it? Well, we do have to pay for necessities. I mean, we, we need a house to live in. We do need food, food to eat. We need clothes to wear. But then the question is, how much of those things do we need? <laughs> right? How big of a house? How many clothes? How much food? The struggle between wants and needs. How we spend our money and time and gifts, but I'm focusing on money today. How we spend our money does reflect on what is most important in our lives, what we value. So I'm going to go to the Bible, and what does the Bible say about how much we're to give to God? And we're not given a clear one answer, okay? The Bible has lots of different answers about how much to give to God. Uh, first lesson today, we hear about Elijah and this widow, this poor widow and her son. All she has is enough food for one last meal, and she's going to basically starve to death. She and her son, it's all they got. Elijah says, can I have some of your food? Well, she, he promises her that God will provide. She somehow trusts Elijah. She says she went and did as Elijah said so that she and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied. The jug of oil did not fail. She gave everything she had, and yet God still provided for her. She didn't run out. Then today's gospel, we hear Jesus sitting in the temple, and he's, he's watching what people are giving to, in their offering to the temple. And he's observing that People are giving a lot of money. The rich people are giving a lot of, of their money to the temple. I don't know how you would necessarily feel if I came down the aisle, if we did the offering still, and passed the offering, if I watched to see what you put in the offering plate. Of course, some people do it um, online now, but Jesus is watching. He knows what we give, and he knows what this widow gives. He sees her put two little coins in, like a penny. And he is impressed. He says, she gave more than everybody else. Now, the disciples, you know, are doing the math. They're going, how does she give more than, like, these rich people giving a whole bunch of money? Well, Jesus says, because she gave everything she had, all she had to live on. Now, we're not told in this story what happened to the poor widow after she did that. Did God, did God still provide for her? Yes, we would hope and pray that God still did. I, I believe that probably would happen, but we don't know. All we know, she trusted God, and she gave everything she had. So there's two examples of people giving everything they had, but there's another example where a rich young ruler comes to Jesus and says, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, well, you know the commandments. Well, I've obeyed the commandments. Well, then go sell everything you have all your possessions, and come follow me. 
And the rich man turns away sorrowful because he had many possessions, we are told. He can't do it. We're told Jesus still loves him, but obviously this man had too much and he couldn't give it up. Apparently having too much can keep us from being generous. It can make us harder to trust God the more we have. Another example, in the early Christian church in Acts, the church was just getting started. The disciples were just meeting together as Christians, and we are told that the believers had all things in common and sold all their possessions and goods and then distributed the proceeds to all as any had need. So they, all the disciples put all their money into a pool and said, okay, now who needs what? And they distributed it that way. Zacchaeus is another example. Zacchaeus, the wee little man, climbed up the sycamore tree. The Lord, you wanted to see? Well, Jesus came to his house and told Zacchaeus, salvation has come to you and your household. And Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus is overwhelmed with gratitude. Salvation has come to him. And we're told that he gives half of his possessions to the poor. Not, all, not everything, but half. And he says, if I've defrauded anyone, which is pretty likely as a tax collector, he defrauded people, I will pay them four times what I took. Very generous. He was wealthy. Zacchaeus had a lot of money. But out of gratitude, he was willing to give half back and four times as much. One other example of how much to give is from the Old Testament where we hear the Old Testament talk about giving a tithe, and you've probably heard this before. Tithing is giving 10% of your income back to God. Not a bad guideline for how much to give. Can you live on 90% of what God's given you? I mean, God gave you everything anyway, so can you make it on 90%? When my wife and I got married, and I was starting out as a pastor. We had to decide how much are we going to give to the church. I said, well, I saw my parents being very generous growing up as a kid. And I said, let's just give a tithe. Let's give 10%. So I'm not a math person. I got the calculator out, <laughs> figured out how much I was making, what 10% was, and what that broke down to each Sunday. And that's what we gave to the church. Now, I have to be honest. When I first did that, I was nervous. How are we going to make it? Giving that much away? And things got very tight sometimes. We didn't have very much. But just when we thought we weren't going to be able to pay a bill or whatever, get what we needed, somehow God provided. A check would come. My grandma would send a check. I'd get money out of nowhere. I go, well, that's good timing. God provided. And I don't know if I would have learned that if I hadn't been willing to tithe. It helped me grow in my faith and my ability to trust God. Now, I'm, you know, would have I done this if I hadn't been a pastor? I'd like to think I still would have. It was, it's been very helpful in my faith life to give that 10%. And I, we still do that today. So we give half a tithe to this church, half a tithe, 5% to English. Sometimes you just do it. Now, I recommend it. If you're not tithing and you want to get to a tithe and jump in, and 10% is like way too much right now, there's something called growth giving where you could just say, well, how about if I just give 1% or 2% more next year? And maybe work towards a tithe down the road. Five years, whatever it takes to maybe get to 10%. That's called growth giving. I'd like to ask you to at least find out what percent you are giving to the church right now. If you don't know what that is, go home today, figure it out. You may need a calculator <laughs> if you're not a bad person. But what percent are you giving right now to the church? 
Is it 1%? 2%? Do you know? And then ask yourself, well, is that really reflective of my love and my gratitude? Is that, does that seem generous? Or not? And pray about that. Ask God to guide and direct you. So that's another suggestion. Another, I don't say requirement, it's not legalistic. It's like, how do we show God our love? We don't give what's left over. We give first fruits off the top. Paul says we're also to give on the first day of every week. Again, not legalistic, but Paul says to give regularly so that we stay connected, so we remember to give thanks to God through our offering. As you think about what you're giving, ask, is it generous? I read a story about a man named Major Bell who started giving a lot more to the church than he gave before. The bookkeeper noticed it. She told the pastor, she said, Pastor, for the last couple of years, Major Bell is giving twice as much than what he pledged. Well, the pastor was curious. He said, well, I'm going to have to find out what's going on. So he invited Major out for lunch. They're having their lunch, and the pastor says, Major, I'm curious. Uh, you're, you're very generous with your gifts to our church. I'm told that you're, you're giving double what you pledged. Well, he brought a napkin to his mouth, kind of embarrassed. He said, well, he said, Pastor, whatever the amount, I know it's not enough. You see, I've known all my life that God loves me and has been extremely gracious to me. A few years back, it occurred to me that God was doing all of the giving. I mean, the real giving. Oh, I, I, I gave regularly to the church, but it was way short in proportion to what my Lord has done for me. So, asked the pastor. Well, it's no mystery, preacher, the major said. I'm just trying to catch up. Well, of course, we're never going to catch up. We cannot outgive. God. God will always give to us. God is a God of abundance, not scarcity. God will provide. God really doesn't need our money, but we need to give. I want to show a video here, at the, close with a video that I have, and hopefully it's all going to work. I guess I'm pushing the right button. There we go. worked yesterday. There we go. Thanks. Oh, I could. Well, maybe just a bite. Oh, yeah! All right! Don't forget the interest.
brought the pie. I realize people listening on the phone couldn't figure, couldn't see the video, so they probably don't know what's happening. But it's a real quick summary: a young man is giving pieces of pie to different hobbies, fashion, clothing, food, and he has one piece of pie left for himself. And there's God sitting at the table. And what about God? God gave the pie to begin with. So uh, this video illustrates, you know. Do we give God the leftovers or whatever is left over? Is it hard to give it to God? Because now we think we need it. God brought the pie. And God will always bring another pie. We're not going to run out. God will continue to provide because God is a God of abundance, not scarcity. So again, I, how much to give? Pray about it. Pray Ask God to let the Spirit guide you and think about, am I giving, what I'm giving, is it generous? Is it out of thanksgiving? Can I do it, scare, can I do it cheerfully? Do we want to give God the last piece or the first slice? Now may the peace that passes all of our understanding keep our hearts and minds of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I ask you to please stand now as we sing our next hymn. confess our creed and then we'll have the children talk about Sunday school. So let's confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
maybe see you now and we can hear a little bit about the Sunday School time and what happened today and what they made and did and learned. All right, Kim, you're going to share a little bit of that? Yes. So we talked about the difference between God's kingdom and Pontius Pilate's kingdom and how you can have one king that can be very mean and rule over people and have all this power, but what does God want for our kingdom? And what is God's dream? So we talked about kings and, and being a good king. So the littles did a crown that they can wear. Russell, you can wear your crown. Uh huh. And then, um, <laughs> and then um, our middle group did a quilt of shalom, which is all of the things that um, God wants our, our, his world to be. Seeing, hearing, loving, asking, praying, friendship, and following. And then the older ones, we had to look up Bible verses, oh. and then look for all of the things that God's dream, God's dream is giving to others, peace, happiness, forgiving, and evil being gone. All right, great. Thank you. Yeah, you covered a lot of territory this morning with the three, the three age groups. Well, thank you, kids. Yeah. Christ the king, the king and the dream. All right, we'll continue now with our prayers of intercession. You can remain, remain seated for the prayers. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. We respond to each petition with your mercy is great. Lord, we give you thanks for social ministries of the church around the world and for every ministry that heals lifts up and empowers those who are poor, oppressed, abused, abandoned, or ignored. Build up your ministries and prosper all works of mercy. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, we praise you for the bounty of creation and a world of abundance. Protect the earth from all who would devour its resources. Create and strengthen sustainable communities who honor your creation with loving care. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, we give you thanks and pray for leaders who seek peace for all nations and lead efforts toward greater justice. Hear us, O oh God. We pray that you will give us generous hearts, O oh Lord. Help us discern what we can give back to you from all you have given us. Send needed resources and caring neighbors to all those in need for refugees, especially the Afga Afghanistan refugees, orphans, widows, those unemployed, those suffering abuse, and all who are in need. Hear us, O God. O Lord, comfort those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, and restore to health all who are sick in any way. Today we pray for those who are grieving, Jeff Gierke and family at the recent death of his father, Kim Schlaes and family at the recent death of her parents. We also pray for healing for those who have asked for our prayers, for Shelley Schwarz, Beth Barnett, Kathy Kading, Bud Dremel, Carol Kantz, Eliza Wan and Opal, as well as anyone else that we name in our hearts at this time. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for families raising children, young children in the faith, for the children, for the parents, grandparents, baptismal sponsors. Send your spirit to guide them and support them in their devotions and conversations. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, we pray for all those who are hunting this time of year, that you will help them appreciate the gift of outdoors and protect them from all harm. Hear us, O oh God. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Uh, will you please stand and share the peace with a fist bump or elbow or a safe way of sharing the peace, a peace sign in the air?
Jesus. <laughs> you may be seated. We'll continue with our... Uh, well, we normally pass the offering, but again, we're still not doing that for safety reasons, but we have offering plates available, and there's the online giving or mailing it through the postal service. Um, but we do appreciate how you show your thanks to God and your love to God through your offering. Let's turn together in the offering prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it, yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. This time I'll ask you to peel off the thin cellophane top layer to get to the wafer. Take the wafer. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. And then peel the next layer, the foil. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let's join in the prayer after communion. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Amen. I ask you to please stand if you're able for the blessing in our closing hymn. God, the beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life, bless and keep you in grace and peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. We sing our sending song, Beautiful Savior.
Blessed are the gifts of a generous God. We go now to live generous lives. Thanks be to God. Thank you.